Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca, I'm a fish biologist and ichthyologist and also a PhD student. I specialise and study the evolution of lower cards catfishes, uh, which are also known as plecos, whiptail catfishes, L numbers, etc. within the aquarium trade. So today I'm going to talk about, well, exactly that group of fishes and maybe a broader topic than I've discussed before when it comes to thinking about different uh, law cards and pleco foods and what you're actually going to feed your plecos or whiptail catfish when you get them. Many people when they first get these fishes are most likely to feed them these things called algae wafers, algae pellets, uh, you get a whole different diversity, algae tablets, stuff like that and Yes, they kind of target the fishes themselves, as in they're somewhat designed for them. They're not actually ideal for a lot of species and they do not contain generally the most ideal ingredients when it comes to feeding your lower cards, your plecos or your whiptail catfishes. Uh, generally they're very high in usually fish meal or krill meal. Fish meal is probably the most problematic because very few lower cards, if any, actually consume fish in the wild. It's not really found, well, ever found really in their guts. If it is, it's less than a 1%. It's just one random bit of fish that's found. So it's not really something that should make up such high volumes within the aquarium, uh, well, the lower cards, plex whiptail catfishes diet, even if they're carnivores. Krill meal and insect meal is more, replicates the diet a little bit more when it comes to carnivores. And then you've got a whole diversity of other foods, but also these tend to be very high in cereals, which is not much use for any of them because many low cars don't really consume actual plant matter. It tends to be these sort of matrix of um, microbes that sort of with algae and stuff like that. So sort of just going to cover it, although I've talked about it so much. What is the natural diet of a pleco or whiptail catfish? It depends on the species. The majority are algivores or detritivores, as I always say, but there's a whole diversity of different diets. So algivores and detritivores are very similar but there is a whole diversity within them. Some are more specialised on algae and certain algae, um, where some focus on different algae, some will focus on different aspects of detritus, and different, some will focus on different aspects of um, other sorts of microbial films. Then you've got even more specialised within that group, which would be like um, Panac, Panacus, who specialise on the microbes within wood but don't have to feed on the microbes within wood um, also like the fungi and stuff they can feed on other things and that's why it's kind of important to think about specialization and generalism some are more specialized and some are more generalized even within every niche there are also carnivores as I mentioned a bit earlier, and there's the same sort of diversity when it comes to carnivores. You've got ones that specialise more in uh, mollusks and hard food items when it comes to um, sort of those invertebrates, but then you've also got ones which focus more on uh, insects and then ones which are a bit more general. And there are very few, and it's very difficult to sort of identify omnivores, but they're not particularly common. Omnivory kind of it's not really, as it, it's not common, and the ones that tend to be labelled as omnivores tend to be a little bit more generalist. So while they're largely feeding on that detritus, that algae, they're also feeding on things like seeds and the odd invertebrate stuff. Like I think that some of uh, it might be pseudolithosis, but definitely hypencistrus and picoltia. And I have a massive document of all of their darts that hopefully one day I can kind of release for people to sort of mull over and think about what they're feeding their fishes. So with this diversity of diets, it means that depending on what you keep depends on what they should be fed on. And with that diversity also comes along that you there is no sort of midline diet. Those that are more specialised towards algae, they can get really bad bloat issues and not last long in captivity when they're fed um, mostly sort of those carnivorous diets. 
even within carnivores, if they're fed high amounts of certain things, it seems to be largely if you're feeding those ones that feed on like the harder food items, if you're feeding them fish meal and stuff, they tend to be more prone to bloats. So then people feed them vegetables, which doesn't offer the kind of same kind of nutrition. So the requirements really vary, and always think about what actual diet your species feeds um, on, and. It's kind of difficult to do it in one video, and I've done various videos. My favourite tend to be algebras, so I tend to film mostly about them. But if people have a question what sort of diet their fishes feed on, I can always reply in the comments and give some, an idea, and maybe even the references uh, related to what they feed on, if it's known. I've also got multiple articles, if people are interested in that, I'll put in the description anyway, so that might help people understand what their fishes might be feeding on. So yes, the requirements really vary and it's not entirely known the extent. We do know though that lower cards or plex, whiptail catfishes, their longevity does really vary depending on how closely you kind of replicate their wild duck. Some of it is a bit of luck, but some have very short captive lifespans. On top of that, some are really difficult to breed in captivity or maybe they have very short reproductive lifespans, which is often very much easy to associate with diet. Um, other factors are also some are very prone to stunting, so it is really important to just think about what you're feeding your fishes. So there's many different aspects of what you can feed your lower card, your pleco. So the main ones would be the prepared foods, and I'll go over those in a second. So here we see I have some of the different kind of prepared diets that I'd feed my lower carids um, or plecos if I was looking at a prepared diet that was like pre-prepared and if I kept actual kind of a species which I will be keeping again sometime I've had them in the past and that I just haven't got any at the moment. So there's a, so these dried gammas, these are just freeze dried shrimp. Um, there's also, sorry everything's dusty out uh, of the fish foods but I've also got like tube effects and stuff like that and that can be a good sort of it's kind of useful to have because it's dry I have had oh I do usually have loads of frozen foods but it's nice to have a freeze dried one large it's not for the low cards particularly but sometimes I will add it into a gel diet or something like that but I thought I'd just include that so eh, instead there's these four so bug bites, so these are split between carnivores and herbivores. Pleco Pops does do a carnivore diet. I just don't have it on me at the moment. It's actually at the university because I used it for trials. So normally I don't recommend bug bites for lower carids. I don't, what I don't actually recommend is their um, pleco diets because their pleco diets tend to be a little bit more on the cereal side um, but this one is not awful it's just easy to access so it's not like my favorite thing to have but I usually have it something like that or tetra on hand because it's so easy to access and of course it's like all of these are impossible to get to but it's not the best it's got fish meal and stuff like that and but it's not the worst if you're limited in what you can access but i would really bulk it out with more um what's it insect meals and stuff if i can open it i don't know why they i i get why they make these like that but it's just like no one can actually read oh okay it is like this but okay so you can kind of see when it focuses that's most it, it has let's just say 40% of the fly larvae and then 20% salmon so it's not entirely the best but at least it's got some insects in it and another brand I would use is uh, Fish Science but I don't have any on hand and that has got a load of um, insect based sort of ingredients in there so largely for my lower cards, if I can, I will, and when it comes to processed food, it's these, I'll say four, because I'll include 
invisible sort of um, the one I don't have the carnival version so mostly in invertebrate sources not really so much insect well there is insect fly larvae but I've done a whole video on I think must have done maybe I haven't done bottom scratcher but this is what I'd feed the carnivores and also bulk out with different frozen foods um, at different times um, depends on what you're feeding I don't like the fact that's a it's a it's a hypensistrous I think contradance there which definitely is not a carnivore or an invertebrate it mostly feeds on algae if, if you just read the original description it's definitely not it's mostly detritus algae I think this is the one with seeds in, um, I think it might be inspector actually, but then very little invertebrates. So this one is the main one I use because, so you do get super green but they tend not to be as keen on it. So I tend to use this and then add the extra algae. It's not very clear how many algae it has. So super green I do know from Rapashi, they have said it contains 80% algae, this one I don't know. So I just bulk it out uh, with more algae if I'm feeding a more strict algae and I might sort of vary it depending on what I'm feeding. But the, all of these are gel ducts so you can add more ingredients or different ingredients in. This one's 75% algae and it's literally, sorry, everything I have just is, this one's been sitting around maybe a little bit but so you can see 75% algae and it's got those two different types of algae, also seaweed and a few different herbs which many herbs do have beneficial um, sort of properties for different fishes um, or fishes in general uh, basil definitely does, I can't, I can't remember what it does but and rosemary I've definitely done research into it um, oregano bay leaves I haven't really looked into that much but all of these are great diets because they're high, these are high in algae or you can add more algae in you can change the diets if you want to add more of different things in um, you can also as it's a gel diet it's more natural for them to feed on kind of because the problem with the algae wafers you'll find that if you put it down they tend to feed at the bottom and none of it sort of they're not really feeding on it, they don't know to sort of put their bodies over it whereas with gel foods you can put it on a surface and it makes it a bit easier it also you can make it as flat as you want, you can make it into a jerky you can feed a sort of diversity of different uh, fishes so these are kind of the prepared diets I'd look at and Rapashi is quite expensive so that's why I do have my own sort of gel diet that I've made, um, made and I've got an ingredient list for. Um, Pleco Pops is much more affordable and is kind of, it lasts a lot longer so the gelling agent in this can last, well it can last over 24 hours, this a little bit shorter, it depends on the flow and the setup and the hardness and factors like that. So. Uh, that's kind of just about the prepared diets and it's really there's not many that are designed with law cards in mind so I would really think about that when you're looking at what you're going to feed your fishes because um, it is quite limited and obviously the EU doesn't have access to this, Australia doesn't have access, it's quite expensive now in the UK Pleco Pops is available in the UK because it's a UK brand but I'm not sure whether Lou will be sort of moving out moving out to different countries. Anyway, along with these prepared diets you can look into something like creating or adding uh, different things to that diet so kind of if it's a gel it's really easy to do that and I've got a whole video on how to make your own fish food and what I use but, and I'll put that in the description or whatever. So you can look into creating or adding to any, uh, well, most prepared foods, is there like a gel or something like that. So one thing I've commonly done is added algal powders, if they're an algivore, to bulk out that algae content. And you can do that with quite a few different uh, prepared diets. 
as long as there's sort of that gel because you need to mix it in you could also add like mushroom powders uh paprika although you kind of don't need more red enhancers for most of them but there's a whole load of different ingredients you can add if it comes to carnivores you could potentially add freeze-dried um, insects into that diet but then you can also cater for um, carnivores a lot more in another way so then it comes to creating your own diet and this is really difficult when it comes to algivores particularly so I've got a whole video on how to make your own algivore diet which is kind of what I use for mine now I haven't used Rapashi now since maybe early February so that video I'll put up or in the description um, other than that there's also, I've been trying out nori, so I use the Japanese sort of uh, sushi seaweed and I mix it with uh, the gelling agent and I sort of layer it, paper mache, over a rock and I let that set and then I let it dry a little bit, not so much that sort of curls up but then I'll add it to the uh, tank and my fishes have been really keen on feeding that but it does make a massive mess otherwise I'd have included that in the video and then got all the complaints about an insanely cloudy tank but it does get filtered out quite quickly, it just looks a little bit cloudy for carnivores this is even easier so if you want to add when it comes to carnivores you can add stuff like a diversity of different frozen foods, freeze dried foods live food such as earthworms um, they might take earthworms you can also try snails it's about experimenting and with frozen foods always think about thiamnase so try and limit the mussels even if they eat them limit anything higher in heavy metals but there's a whole diversity of different frozen foods that you could potentially feed them and also the freeze dried and stuff so it's about getting creative with what you know these fishes eat because there isn't actually that many studies about what they eat, about trialling different captive diets because most captive diets aren't even aimed at them particularly, they're aimed more at trout, salmon, stuff like that. So kind of the, my final point about this is enrichment, adding to their diet and I've kind of explained that anyway. So whether it's adding that nori to a rock or trying a different diversity of frozen foods, maybe you could add them to a gel so it sinks to the bottom and it's easier to feed for them. Uh, maybe creating your other sort of um, gels that you can put on a rock and make them feed for it. Trying different gelling agents because I've only tried about four or five but there must be others that are worth trying that will hold the food down and allow them to feed in a more natural manner. You could even try something, um, there's plenty of different diverse ways of feeding snails I guess. You could even fill a snail with uh, different uh, gel food and see whether the fish feeds on it if you think about a larger carnivore, something like Scobin and Cistrus um, or Leprocanthicus. So anyway, I'll end this video here. If you like my videos, please comment, like and subscribe. And don't forget, we do have a Discord uh, server where we discuss anything sort of scientific or interesting within the aquarium hobby. And it's welcome to anyone of any level of fish keeping. Um, and goodbye.